Welcome back to the EGF Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We are here for the final set of the night, or the final match of the night, I should say, between Canisius College and Hawaii University. So, uh, joining me at the desk is Dara. Dara, how's it going? Pogging with my pogs out. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I take them back. I, 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 I instantly gutted it as soon as it came out of my mouth. I'm doing okay, friend. I'm having a lovely evening. We, it took us a little bit to get here to this point. Uh, Canisius and University of Hawaii took a sweet old time banning stages, but that's A-OK -okay because we're in it for the long haul tonight. I'm having a lovely evening myself. We have been sitting at this desk for quite some time. And guys, this is the time where I would like to remind people to get up every now and then to make sure that your blood is circulating throughout your body, that you're staying pumped, and that you're properly hydrating yourselves. You know, keeping a, a bottle of water near your desk at all times can be exceptionally helpful. And the first match of tonight that we're going to be seeing is E-Dog from Canisius College going up against Cheesebrain from the University of Hawaii. So, uh, talk to us. Give us a little bit of sauce on these players. Who are these people? Well, uh, I <clears throat> I know a little bit about uh, a few of these guys, mostly because uh, I know most of the Canisius roster. E-Dog is a, a sub coming in, and they usually like to start him early. Uh, I am blanking on who he tends to play. I know in the past he's played Byleth, but I feel like he has a, a another character in his pocket that he's been testing. Um, so we possible. shall see how he does here. Cheese Brain, on the other hand, for Hawaii, going with the Terry, and it looks like E Dog for Canisius will be going Inkling, and we are on PS2 to start. Oh, Eddie. Well, Hinkling on PS2, Eddie is a, is a difficult choice. Uh, it's, it's kind of difficult for Cheese Blade right off the bat. This is a fantastic stage for Inkling. Uh, probably do very few characters that can make as much use out of these biplats as Inkling can. Uh, as soon as Inkling gets in, it can be huge damage. But speaking of huge damage, Cheese Blade already getting the throw into the up B. Uh, right now, just sort of playing back a little bit, throwing out a handful of power waves. Just sort of trying to get a lead on how E Dog is going to move. E Dog, no SDI on the jab jab power dunk two times in a row and that's the exact kind of litmus test that cheese really needed uh because that just basically tells her how much do you know about the target matchup do you know the most basic fundamental component do you know how to sdi jab jab power dunk uh and if you cannot what else can i start getting away with uh so the fact that e-dog has established that so early on can be so dangerous for them in the long run because that means they could be eating a lot of percent and e-dog already Pretty low on ink, he'll have to charge that up uh, soon, but sitting at 104, this is danger territory. There's only 55% racked up. That down B, that's not quite gonna kill yet, but it will soon. And now E-Dog in a dangerous position here at ledge. Yeah, but E-Dog right now just able to sort of force Cheese Blade to come uh, off stage. That's a great air dodge from Cheese Blade to get back on, was able to avoid it. And E-Dog getting a little bit too antsy with the approach, just starts dashing right into, uh, you know, a lot of uh, Cheese Brain's hitboxes. Uh, right now, Cheese Brain is starting to really approach that percent where the Terry is going to get dangerous quick. So it is in E Dog's best interest to get Terry off stage and try to get an early percent stock because otherwise, you know, Terry that's a stock up, sitting at 100 plus percent can be a menace. Ooh, there's the grounded roller, but he can't find the smash attack to follow it up, and now Terry's got the go online. We'll see if this means. Danger territory. Ooh, good parry to back air, as it looked like Terry wanted the, the Buster Wolf out of that, but uh, ooh, good air dodge read as well on the forward smash, and just like that, the socks are even back up. Yeah, that might have been just an accidental miss and put it um, tech roll in. Uh, Cheese Blade maybe did not account for how much uh, hit stun they're going to be in. But either way, right now, E Dog slowly trying to get this lead back for themselves while just catching all of these dashbacks, all these rollaways from Cheese Blade. E Dog um, really is starting to overshoot really beautifully right now. But again, uh, Jab Jab Power Dunk dealing so much damage to E Dog. Yeah, but now E-Dog has to play very careful at 122. He's going to get the rapid jab off, which is going to get some paint onto Terry, but it's a matter of landing the next couple hits in order to get some damage. But the up smash coming out from Cheese Brain is going to be able to secure that second stock, and now E-Dog on his last. 
Yeah, this game is moving really quickly right now. And Edog is having the right idea about the way that they're already shooting on the ground. But the biggest thing is they could definitely be trying to play a little bit more out of shield. Uh, and some of the approaches are devolving into really linear ones. Uh, and we're seeing Cheese Blade really start to capitalize on those. Ooh, still gets the whip punish on the down B. Uh, that's not something you see quite often. Cheese Blade probably just didn't press a button in time. Again, the go online, and wow. oh no, the kick flip into the forward smash, and just like that, the stocks are even back up. We got a last stock situation here in game one. Wow, right now, Edog is just like doing a good job of just sort of, you know, making sure that Terry is not living uh, too long when he has yellow active, because it is inevitable that you're going to be eating, um, you know, a busted wolf or uh, a power geyser, and they just do obscene amounts of damage. But right now, Edog has to find a way to get back onto the stage, gets a little bit greedy with that double jump back hit, not really sure that they're looking for with that one. Um, and then just sort of slowly playing at the center of stage, waiting for Cheese Blade to whiff or overcome it. I feel like Edog could be going through like a lot more like big combo moves. Uh, you know, maybe like a grab, you know, to be able to get like one of Inkling's many throw combos and oh man, what an unfortunate SD. That's uh, yeah, sometimes it just be like that. Yeah, that's, that's a feels bad moment, but uh, it stalled out for a very long time. Uh, actually, technically too long outside of that stage. You know, he's just trying to drift away here to get away from Terry, buy himself a little bit of space and I think he, the roller actually pi ended up pineappling him uh, and yeah. not allowing him to recover. So an unfortunate way for E-Dog to end game one, but it does hand a point over to Cheese Brain and Hawaii mm -hmm. University. Yeah, not a whole lot to say about that game really. That uh, I feel like just both of them were still feeling each other out. What's really important though is that like for going into the Telly matchup, there is a lot that you have to do, but the biggest thing to keep in mind is like, okay, what is fake and what isn't, you know, because you can be avoiding so much damage. Jab, jab, power dunk deals obscene amounts of percent, uh, and you can, you know, easily avoid getting hit by it, you know, just so as long as you're on top of your SDI, but, you know, E-Dog uh, really wasn't, and as a result, they, were, they found themselves at much higher percents quite early on than they needed to. Um, so, you know, with that being said, hopefully by game two, they're able to realize that and tighten it up. Um, and if not, just hold shield a little bit more. Uh, more often than not, they found themselves sort of dashing in. And although it started to catch uh, Cheese Brain in the beginning of all those dashbacks, um, Cheese Brain started to really adapt uh, towards the end. Yeah, and on top of that too, uh, I found it very odd, I guess, that when Terry's go was online, it was never really online for long. Uh, E-Dog did a decent job of cleaning up those stocks once Terry was at that high uh, of a percentage. But uh, again, on that last stock, that SD, you know, really kind of sucked the momentum away here. And so for game two, uh, you know, not much has really changed. Yoshi's story, an interesting stage. Yeah, um, honestly, this kind of stage, you know, so as long as Inkling is able to have the platforms, they can have, you know, a field day with Terry, but uh, E-Dog finally able to get a little something started, goes through the gun off neutral, and then resets the situation. I don't know who E-Dog is swinging at, but not Cheese Blade for sure, because they were on the other side of the stage, my friend. Swinging for the fences, but now Terry with an opening, Cheese Brain cannot convert off it and so now the battle for center stage begins and it feels like cheese brain ooh, good reversal there on the uh neutral b from e-dog and to get that little bit of percent as it, that was another dangerous attempt we've seen cheese brain use that side b to go in but now the go uh the buster wolf coming through with the extra damage not gonna be able to kill and we're in an edge guard situation uh, and once again, wow, that was a really good mash out from E-Dog, able to stop the power guys pretty actively. Uh, good recognition and awareness that they you know, shouldn't be able to get away with that. Right now, E-Dog just taking any space that they can, but they put themselves into a corner against Terry and you know, losing your stock is inevitable. Yeah, good catch on the jump from Cheese Blade. Hmm, I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, it's one of those things where it make it makes sense when you go for it, but then if it doesn't land, you just kind of end up looking a little silly. And uh, he'll eat 38% for it, but still 123, and it still feels like Cheese Brain's looking to get some extra percent here while he still has go. It's it's a little bit strange because like even though that's like a really good option to call 
um, you know, out people for going a lot in between stocks, so a lot of people like to go for the cross of wheels. Um, the thing is, is like, you know, you, you if you really overcommit to it uh, without a proper lead before the hand, right? Cheese really never really established that they're going to go through those cross-ups. Uh, that being said, right now they're holding on to the stock so well at 150%. Oh, wow, the weak hit of the up smash only connecting. Uh, so Cheese Bullion is still going to live for a while longer. Next hit should be able to do it. And there is the roller into the F smash. No mash at 170%. Um, and yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I mean... Uh Terry was kind of standing in the corner there for a little while, throwing out those power geysers uh, in neutral, and just the roller able to catch him. But 93% on E-Dog means she's brain still going to be able to hold the lead here. E-Dog's going to have to do something to try and make this back up. And it feels like she's brain's kind of caught on this platform with really nowhere to go. That bomb is going to hit him out, but... But you see Cheese Blade starting to slowly catch on to E-Dog's rhythm. Like the way that they're sort of jumping in with aerials and controlling the space. They've sort of they've started to dominate the same exact kind of space. Uh, and Cheese Blade was able to drop down and get back onto center stage. So we look at the one of them just sort of catching that opening uh, in E-Dog's offense. Um, ooh, they try to catch a jump. A bit committal. Uh, you know, again, Cheese Blade has really never established that they're gonna jump out of the corner. Uh, so even though that's, like, not a bad choice to make, um, it definitely, like, needed, you know, a stronger lead behind it. Wow. Yeah, and just like that, look at the damage that Cheese Brain has racked up, all the way up to a, a hundred now, and E-Dog backed into a corner here, he's gonna get down to it a couple oh, times, oh. there's the Buster Wolf attempt, but not gonna land, and now Terry trying to find his way back to ledge. Does get back up, shields the forward smash, gonna get rollered for no. it, and not gonna get the strong hitbox. Goes they went the for the two, they went for the dash up shield. Uh, and I believe it's possible they, that they got shield poked because if they dropped the shield at that distance, that would have been a penalty. So that's so unfortunate. And again, beautiful out of shield, catching onto E Dog's antiness to start something with the rolling. It's a really nice, just solid, consistent play from Cheese Win. Um, more often than not, in this set, we just saw E-Dog cover options that, again, like, by themselves, they're like, not bad commitments, but it would need to be in response to something that Terry was doing. So we didn't see, like, those jumps out of the corner. We didn't see, you know, a lot of crossover rolls, and yet we saw E-Dog try to cover those places a lot. So you just have to be a little bit more cognizant of what your opponent is doing and looking for uh, to be able to commit like that. It's almost like E-Dog had a read in his head of how the play was going to develop. And so he went with what he thought would happen rather than, mm -hmm. you know, kind of acknowledging the situation going. Yep. Sometimes, you know, you might be moving so fast doing all these different things. The best thing that you can do is just stop. No, it doesn't matter if you get hit, just slow it down. Just slow it down. Just take a look at what's happening in front of you. Uh, and then you'll notice so many things. You're like, wait a second, they're moving like this all the time. And we saw that exact same thing from Cheese Queen. Uh, you know, when they were kind of stuck on the side plats on Yoshi's, they saw the way that E-Dog was jumping in, uh, in a very predictable, you know, arc, in a very predictable movement pattern, and as a result, they were able to find the opening consistently and start to land back onto the ground. So sometimes you just gotta stare down your opponent, you gotta look at them, you gotta see what they're doing, you gotta see, you know, how they're covering, because people are imperfect, people have holes in your play. You know, and that's and as soon as you find those openings, you'll be able to get in instead of always like shooting shots in the dark. Uh, 